Modeler is a collaborative, multi-dimensional spreadsheet platform in the cloud. In this modeling series, we will develop a working annual budget model with spend phasing and sub-models for sales, personnel, and travel planning. You can follow along with this tutorial using a free trial account of Modeler by registering on our homepage. To begin, let's create a new model. For our purposes, we will leave the financial year settings as standard and name the model Financial Performance. You can see that the new model presently has no cubes or dimensions by default. We will develop a profit and loss cube to hold our financial history and plans. The submodels for personnel, travel, and sales will be feeding their plans to this cube in real time. Let's create some of the necessary dimensions. Creating a dimension is very simple and uses tab spaces to indicate the dimension hierarchy. Alternative hierarchies allow for multiple ways of reporting on the underlying information within a cube. We will make a month dimension with two hierarchies, one, a list of months, and the second being the months rolling into quarters. I will be copying and pasting a number of dimension definitions from a file I've prepared earlier. You can find a link to the same text file in the description section below this video. The annual element at the bottom will be used to hold annual assumptions. The department dimension will have two hierarchies, one for the full company structure and another which just focuses on our profit centers, which are our storefronts and our online department. The account dimension is a cut-down profit and loss structure. When we create the cube, we will also be creating the final dimension, the profit and loss measures dimension. Before we review the new cube, we will quickly add some elements into the measure dimension. Dollar will hold the financial amounts, and Dollar Thousands will calculate the financial amounts in thousands. Let's have a look at the profit and loss cube now that it's all ready to go. Since we haven't uploaded any data, the cube appears empty. When opening a cube directly, Modeler automatically decides where the dimensions will be placed, but you can change these using the left-hand dimension management panel. Let's make a view showing financials for each department by month for financial year 17. I can expand groupings within a dimension by clicking on it. If I want the default view to show all elements or a specific set, I can double click on the current selections and change the instructions. This dialog lets me provide a list of instructions which determine what data will show within my report. For now, I will simply expand all departments. Since I would like to show the totals at the bottom, I will use the reverse instruction before the Expand All instruction.
For the months dimension, I will mix it up a little bit more. We will add the 12 months, followed by a blank space and the full year total. I will also update the account dimension instructions so that any account is selectable. Now that my report is presentable, I would like to point out that data can be entered into the cube as long as none of the corresponding elements to the selected cell have children. As I enter information in, you can see that the various dimensions all consolidate the information based on the hierarchies we defined earlier. At any time, we can add additional hierarchies into dimensions to allow for even more flexible reporting. Let's save this work view now as departments by month. I'm going to create another version of this work view, so let's duplicate it again and name the new work view Annual Profit and Loss. Here I will swap our department dimension with the account dimension to provide a profit loss view. The report looks good, but we are lacking any real information. So let's load the actuals for financial year 2017. We have a CSV file with the latest information from our ERP environment. I will first upload this into the modeler data store. Data within the data store can be added to or updated at any time manually or by uploading another CSV file of data. We can also filter the data set by clicking on the heading. Additionally, other systems can connect to the data store and push data in for modeler to process. Now that the data is held within the internal data store, we will create a data process to import it. To do this, we navigate to our model and create a new process. The action setting is correct, so we will provide the name of our cube. The data source should be set to our internal data store, and the tables list will automatically select the first table, which happens to be the one we just uploaded. Next, we update the mappings so that our data fields match each of the dimensions within our cube. If we miss any, the process will warn us that it will need to make changes to the cube. This is a good indication that we have missed a dimension. Since we have finished naming the process, we will get Modeler to validate it and then run it. Because we named the scenario dimension actual instead of scenario, the process is telling me that running the process would recreate the cube. Let's go back and fix the name so that it imports into the cube as is. All reports indicate that the data was loaded successfully. Let's take a look at our reports to see how it all looks. It looks like the data set populated correctly. I will export this to Excel and reconcile it against the source.
That concludes part one of the financial planning model tutorial. In the next part, we will begin adding the phasing formula for annual budgeting. If you have any questions about this or any other tutorial in the series, please contact us at info at